Yo, BJ Gador with the Daily BJ, and these are my 10 favorite mobility drills to improve performance, reduce the risk of injury, and accelerate recovery. Do each one for about two to five minutes pre or post workout or anytime you need some mobility benefits. They address your whole body collectively. They're in no particular order. Enjoy. Your feet are where the rubber hits the road. So this drill is something I do before every single workout. All you need is a lacrosse ball or a double lacrosse ball setup. A peanut is my ideal option because what it allows you to do, if this is my foot, I can actually kind of go in the crevices and access the inside outside of the foot in ways that a single ball alone can't, but either one works two to five minutes per side. Have something you kind of hold on to with the off hand for balance. And all I'm gonna do is just work on swiping the bottom of that tissue. Obviously good for plantar fasciitis, but because the fascia is all connected, this will actually release your entire body coming up, especially for the lower body. Some people that have really tight hamstrings can actually roll the bottom of their foot and then notice the immediate improvements in hamstring mobility, being able to bend over after doing the drill. It's an excellent one. You can pressure on the inside of the foot more. Just get as much of your body weight as you can. You can go more to the outside, coming on to the knuckles of the toe, knuckles of the feet there, working towards the heel, and then even kind of docking that heel downwards and this will actually help improve the individual facets all around the feet, toes, and just work on driving the knee past the toe, moving them more towards the outside, improving dorsiflexion while then pressuring through that foot. This is a staple of my training. It should be a staple of yours, especially if you're a runner, jumper, and just do a lot of stuff on your feet. Do it. Poor ankle mobility will open you up to, obviously, ankle pain, but also oblique performance on running, jumping, squatting. It'll be tough to get into the key positions you need to get in. It'll also lead to knee pain. This is my favorite drill for improving ankle mobility and also stretching the calves, and even strengthening the ankle and calves simultaneously. So I like any low boxer step will work to allow you to kind of drop your heel to get more dorsiflexion or more stretch on the joint. But my favorite option is the sand dune stepper. All my gears at gardenofgains.com with a Z. This just gives you the ability to kind of get some actual in-sand work, really working on the stabilizers, mobilizing all those small joints in the foot, toe area, and uh, this is my favorite option. So use what you have. You can do these drills on two leg or one. I'm gonna show one option here. Start by just docking down two to five minutes per side, or you could just do two to five minutes on both legs all the way through. I'm just gonna start by keeping the legs straight, tightening the glute and quad, and just adding rotation with the leg completely straight. Then I'm gonna to move to doing, banging the knee a bit, and now I'm getting more lower calf soleus and into the Achilles, driving the knee forward. And then I can work on driving forward and out to the side over the pinky toe, really improving dorsiflexion. I can even kind of do some kind of side to side rolling like that. I can then go into some actual reps, full squeeze at the top, full stretch at the bottom. Then I can hinge over, and now in this Hinge position, I really shift it now to the upper calf gastroc area, even a little bit into the hamstring here, and just work on, especially behind the knee, just work on side to side. I can do some single leg donkey calf raises, all right? And again, I can do all these drills on both feet at once, but again, what the ankles really respond to is a lot of time under tension. These areas get really tight and restricted, so you need to spend a lot of time moving around in all planes of motion and actively strengthening the areas. But this will be money for those that join pain and those that have a lot of explosive activities where they need to get that ankle with your full range of motion to maximize their power output. Enjoy. If you ever had knee pain or you've had knee surgeries where you've lost range of motion at the knee joint, you must add flexion gapping to your routine. It is mobility magic. It will actually create space within the joint capsule itself to be able to bend the knee more and get deeper into squats, lunges, etc. You can do this with your ankle bone of the opposite foot, or you can use a lacrosse ball setup like this, the peanut. So you've got options. All you do with this is you do the exact same sandwiching of the calf and hamstring to create the gapping hinging effect there. So what I'm gonna do here is get like this. I can either place the ball just like that, and this actually allows you to get the inner outer compartments of the calf and behind the knee simultaneously, or this kind of equipment-free hack. And obviously get a pillow or pad for the knees. You're gonna be on this for two to five minutes per side. I put that ankle bone right in there, I sandwich it together, and now I just sink my body weight back. And I'm gonna use that ankle bone to kind of both shear into the tissues itself of the high calf, lower hamstring area, and create the gapping effect where I actually improve flexion or bending of the knee. So we'll kind of sawing in and out like that. I can also kind of just stick back into it. And when 
I have it like this, I can actually work on stretching my shins at the same time, the top of the foot flat. Just dig in, two to five minutes per side. And again, here's what it looks like with the ball. So you've got options. And using the ball is kind of nice in the sense that because I have freedom with that chair leg, I can actually post up and get a little more motion in the area than I would otherwise. So both options are excellent, but you'll notice instant improvements in range of motion. Definitely do this before a squat workout or anytime your knees are feeling junky, it'll make such a difference. Trust and believe. The key to good mobility work is to mobilize in the exact positions you're trying to change. I love the Bulgarian split squat or Griffin elevated split squat for building my lower body, as many of you know. And I do this drill to help mobilize the muscles and joints involved in the movement. Two to five minutes per side. And there's also a nice fold you can use and kind of just move between positions. But this is a quad hip flexor stretch. You can do it off of a bench or whatever you use for your single leg squats, like a single leg squat stand. You can also do this in the edge of a couch. It's also called the couch stretch, popularized by Dr. Kelly Sturette. I highly recommend you check out his book, Becoming a Supple Leopard, for all things mobility. So initially, again, two to five minutes per side. You're going to... Pull the ribs and shoulders down, crunch the abs, clench the glute. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. You can start doing a little bit of oscillation and out like this. You can reach the arm overhead and kind of stretch lat into hip flexor. You can twist at the upper back and mobilize the T-spine a bit and keep opening up that trail leg hip flexor. And by elevating the back foot in this manner, you also make it quad and hip flexor simultaneously, particularly the middle quad muscle we're really trying to get after here. I can shift my weight forward more and even do a little bit of hip flexion and internal external rotation on the lead leg. I can open up like this and mobilize my upper back and chest. I can pin down a bit and let that leg fan out and just work on my adductors. All right? And then I can also just kind of post up and work on rotation to the trail leg hip flexor and then coming back like this. Try to shift as much as your weight possible and peel open the whole front of the hip. So critical for those with knee pain and back pain. And again, the key focus is making sure that the abs are engaged throughout so we're not moving through the lower back. Money drill, do it today. Elevated prayer stretch is money. If you have trouble getting your arms overhead, have stiff shoulders or tight lats, you can do this off a of box, bench, or ottoman, or even couch at home for your hashtag Netflix and stretch drills. Here's what we're going to do. You have two options, one arm straight and then one bent arm. The bent arm is a little better for mobilizing the upper back and the triceps. Both options are good, two to five minutes total. So here's that first option, have a pillar pad for the knees. Arms are straight, crunch your abs, let the head kind of sink between the arms. And I can move side to side. I can add some rotation. I can go more one arm at a time. I always have a little more tightness on my right side, so I can explore that space a bit more. All right, I can also do this option. This is my favorite. Bend the arms. It's gonna really mobilize the upper back. In tricep areas, you can kind of go like this, in and out. I can do that same side to side shifting. I can also go more one side at a time and even add a little kind of rotation into it. And again, use your body weight to let gravity do most of the work here. Two to five minutes total or per side based on how you're working it. Amazing drill. And again, just keep rooting that rib, those ribs and shoulders down, playing around with those positions. You get better pull-ups and presses instantly. Kneeling adductor stretch or groiners, pillow or pads for the knees are ideal because you're going to be on those kneecaps. Don't want you to be uncomfortable. You're going to spend two to five minutes in this drill mobilizing the inner thigh and groin area for better squatting patterns, and also even lateral lunges or side-to-side -side planes of motion where there's restrictions here. If you have a groin injury, this is a money drill for you. First option, getting the short adductors and also directly working on your squat positioning. Some people will notice that when their knees are too close together, you'll actually feel like your femur or thigh bone is bumping into the pelvis. So everybody has different hip anatomy. This will carry over very well to the type of squatting stance you need, some wider, some narrower based on how it feels for the hip. If I get like this, I need a nice wide stance because I am prone to getting that kind of impingement or bumping of the femur against this particular hip bone that I have. So all I'm gonna do is kind of rock back and forth. I'm keeping a slight natural arc in my low back and just moving in and out of these positions. Now I can also turn this way and create kind of an internal rotation effect on this leg. That'll also help improve my squat depth and hip mobility. I can turn the other way and do the same thing on that 
side. Oh, feels good. And then I can work long adductor of this leg, short adductor of this leg, and this is like the lateral lunge position. So just work on kind of going like this. You'll feel so much mobilization going on here. And then I can even bring in a little hip rotation by rolling that foot open just like that as I come back through. So two to five minutes total or two to two and a half minutes per side if you're doing the single leg options. Amazing way to take care of that groin. Ely hangs are a staple of my mobility plan. They should be of yours as well because of the fact that not only are we stretching the lats, improving over at arms position or shoulder flexion, but we're also decompressing the spine, which hydrates and nourishes the discs. All the stuff we do during the day, squatting, standing, running, jumping, compresses the spine. Decompressing the spine is great for retaining your length and keeping that spine safe and healthy and supple. Now, hangs are tough for many for, for long periods of time due to the grip, so you wanna make it self-assistant if possible. You wanna be able to keep your feet on the floor. If you can't do that, you bring a box or bench and have your feet on that to allow you to do this. So you can do it on a, a fixed bar, or you can also do it on gymnastics rings or handles like this. I kind of like this option because I can actually rotate through the shoulder joint. So two to five minutes total. You're gonna just sit down, pull the rib shoulders down, crunch the abs. Do about three to five breaths, in through the nose, out through the mouth, nice and relaxed. Then start adding, if you have these handles, some movement through the shoulder joint. I can even kind of floss my hips to the side and get some traction into that back hip area. My favorite option is kind of this twisting action. And I just kind of basically oscillate like this, open up the trail leg hip flexor, so basically lat all the way down to the hip flexor. And body weight just kind of tractions the hips. You can really open it up nicely. Switch sides and repeat. Oh man, so good just lengthening the whole system, opening it up. And then again, if you use this guy, just make sure that ideally you have enough bend in the knees you can play around, but you can just see in that case, if my arms are fixed and I'm adding motion by twisting my body more again, while keeping the abs engaged and not hyperextending the back. This one is so key for longevity. If there's one thing to do in the gym before an upper body workout or workout in general, hit this up, especially because the lats really stiffen and tighten at the desk all day or while driving in this shortened position. We gotta get overhead, otherwise shoulder impingement, rotator cuff injuries, stuff you don't wanna deal with. Do it. I'm a big believer in the band bicep, trap and neck mobilization, anchor a thick band to an anchor point just like this. You come away and create an instant traction in effect to mobilize this area. And one thing people overlook is you actually have a bunch of nerves in your arms and when these tissues get tight, it can create neurotension or kind of burning, tingling sensations in the arm. These tissues get especially tight as you get older, so it's really important. You can take the trail arm and you've got multiple benefits into one by going like this and pushing the elbow forward to mobilize the anterior chest shoulder of the opposite arm. But all I'm gonna do is kind of turn away from it, lean my body weight, and then work on just internally, externally rotating through the shoulder joint. You're gonna feel just incredible stretching coming through bicep, trap, and even neck. I can then work on just kind of rolling the head and neck and then I can take this arm and kind of really just mobilize and stretch the traps as I add motion through the arm. Two to five minutes per side is a total game changer for me, especially if you're someone that is a little bicep dominant, a thing like rows and pull-ups, or there's a lot of curls in their career to open up this area. And again, they get very tight as you age. So you want to address these as much as possible. If you have a history of back pain, the elevated hamstring stretch is a total game changer. This also works on a high tabletop kitchen counter or you can use the steps of a staircase and progressively go to a higher step as you progress. Big focus is minimize movement at the spine. We're gonna also move through all planes of motion to get the entire hamstring complex, inner, outer, middle hamstring. When these guys get tight, as you bend over or hinge on things like deadlifts, et cetera, swings, you can get yourself in a situation where the lumbar spine or lower back rounds, bulging discs and other bad things can happen off of that spasms. So again, we wanna make sure we keep a slight natural arc in that low back. If you have to bend the knee a little bit, you can. Some might find a little better hamstring stretching that way, but I actually prefer it totally straight. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of floss in and out like this for two to five minutes per side. I can even kind of add a little twist. Take a deep inhale, exhale. And you can also even get a little trail leg hip flexor here too, but this one is so important. 
And again, when it comes to mobility work, it's hard to do all of this stuff. There's so many drills, so you gotta focus on the highest priority areas where you have an injury history or concern, or you do the areas that are most important to the upcoming workout itself. So do that one, you'll love it. Great for those with back pain. The elevated glute stretch or piriformis stretch is ideal for those with tight glutes, sit a lot, back pain, or sciatica. It helps a ton with this, two to five minutes per side. I love the elevated option because you can actually spend more time in this position, which is key for improving mobility. You can't just do these quick stretches. You gotta spend time in these positions and move around to create change, and you gotta do it often. So what we're gonna do here is get like this, really stretching the external hip rotators, and start by just kind of going like this. Again, two to five minutes per side. Even get a little outer hamstring there. Once it kind of opens up a bit, you can plant that leg down, post up. And just focus on deep breathing. You can turn this way, get a little upper back mobilization. You can also turn away. You can kind of fold over a bit more and just kind of add some movement in and out. And again, if this is a really tough position to get into, you can also sit on a chair that is low enough where you can kind of go like this. Uh, this would, I did a little bit too tall of a chair, but you get the idea, and just work on mobilizing it that way, or just spending time seated at your desk, a way to sneak in the mobilization during the day. These drills will help a ton. I think you'll enjoy it. Please do it. It's all about longevity. Mobility is king, and if you don't get enough range of motion on the moves you do in the gym, you're leaving gains on the table and open up the risk of injury. Neither are good. Subscribe to my channel. The workout description has the full list. Love you guys. Peace.